Welcome folks, I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Jackie Zender, and we're looking at The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. This is a teaser for Netflix. It is a, uh, a prequel to The Dark Crystal, as far as I am told. So if you guys grew up with it like I did, this should be very exciting. Truth be told though, I haven't seen it in a very, in a very, very, very long time. It's been a minute, let's check this out. I really enjoyed that. Actually, I'm, I, I want to watch this. I was really floored at the puppeteering. Be yeah. Because, you know, in the age of everything going CGI yeah. and, you know, computer animation, it's so refreshing to see them using puppeteering again. I mean, obviously you have to. I think there would be an uproar if they didn't. Right. With the, with the Dark Crystal. And it just looks so good. It looks so much better than I remember. Puppeteering has always been, you know, pretty good, but like this looks like next level in the way they're bringing it to life to the point mm -hmm. that you could barely tell. Yeah, I, I didn't think, I was like, wait, when you said puppeteering, it's like, oh, oh wow, they are doing puppeteering. And I was like, ooh. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm super floored by that. Just that alone makes me so intrigued by this, just the level of craftsmanship yeah. going into this. There's so much detail into it. It almost kind of also has like an avatar feel with just like the aesthetic around, like all the detail going into it. It's gonna be cool. Yeah. I like it. I couldn't tell when they were using CGI. Like I was wondering if that flower was CGI because obviously like back in the day, <clears throat> it was mostly practical effects. It was mostly set pieces and they were, yeah. you know, trying to do it on camera as much as possible. Like I imagine the lightning that we're frozen on here is uh, an Animation, right. right? But some of it could be mechanical as well, like the flower, it could have been... That's what I was wondering about. I was wondering if that flower was CGI, but I think that they tried to do as much as they could live action. Yeah. And that just takes me back to the, you know, my childhood, you know, growing up watching Sesame Street and all that right. stuff. And, and even, I mean, <laughs> Kermit. The, yeah, the, and the Dark Crystal as well, of course, you know, because I haven't seen anything like this in so long. I know they did like Muppet movies, mm -hmm. but it, it, it was one of those things where it didn't seem to hide the fact that you were looking at Muppets or, or people being puppeteered. It had a kind of right. emotion to it that felt like there was someone just off camera, right? Whereas here, they, it seemed like they tried to make it look like as lifelike as possible. Which... I don't know where they would be hiding in this because like, you know, the background and everything looks so real. Like you can see the grass, you can see them running and moving. It's like, where right. are these puppet strings coming from? <laughs> right, I, well, exactly. And oh, it also gives me the feels of like the never ending story. And oh. just in terms of that environment, yes. that world. This is super exciting, I'm, I'm super yeah. into it. The costume design for all the creatures and whatnot. And it also is just that, kind of fantasy element. I mentioned this the other day, uh, we're in that era of nostalgia where we keep kind of looking back, back. and bringing to life, especially through Netflix, bringing to life all the things that we grew up on, like mm. Fuller House or whatever the case may be. Yeah. In this age of reflection and, and nostalgia, I think that this is 
perfectly timed. We're, we're still riding that wave of mm -hmm. all the things that came from like this, the 70s, the 80s, yep. the 90s, and, and then reviving that and making it cool again. Disney's and, doing that too, like with all the old cartoons, like they're redoing them, you know, that's right. now like that's what these people are doing. I think that's great because especially with the way everything has changed, mm -hmm. it's really cool to see how much further you can take the imagination. Right. You know, they already had this amazing concept and mm -hmm. they did the best they could in the time that they had. Right. Um, and now they can do it even further and it's just like the way fans fantasy is expanding you're just like oh my god these worlds yeah <laughs> it's no so great no exactly my I, inner nerds like Yay. yeah <laughs> no i agree with you 100 percent. i can't even tell uh if there's stuff that's being shot in location like i'm super fascinated with just the technical aspects of this yeah like i'm looking at this shot of 12 seconds for instance i can't tell if they're actually out in the wild or if this is like a matte painting. Right. Uh, I, I would imagine it's a combination of the two. Like the way that river is running down the uh, the side of the screen there, mm -hmm. I'm like, well, maybe that's a matte painting and the rest in the background is like an actual plate from some location and they're just kind of merging these elements together. Layering it, yeah. Yeah, and then the, the, the little, you know, the castle in the middle of all that or, the, or that structure is a, a miniature of some kind. I don't know. And then the puppeteering is happening on a green screen, I would imagine. Yeah. It just looks so good. I wish that this was, I mean, it's cool that it's a series and so we can like really dive into this, so, which is probably the most appropriate way to do fantasy these days because right. uh, although Game of Thrones didn't end the best way possible, <laughs> um, you, you, we saw with that that Exploring things in a series is probably the better way to go because yeah. then you can really dive into each character yeah, you know, Into these individual storylines and really expand and let it let things breathe as opposed to compressing it down It would be cool if this was a feature or if they do a feature version because it's been a minute since we've had a live action on the you know the big screen with something like this that imagined this way with the puppeteering and whatnot. I wish that we would bring that back just because it's like the nostalgia. That's it's like yeah. I'm part of that club too. Like the nostalgia yeah. is awesome, you know. How did you feel about the music in this? I thought the music was really nice. I like the music. It's definitely got that uh, epic feel to the whole thing. <clears throat> right, kind of like Game of Thrones, everything. Which yeah. Is, yeah, or not Game of Thrones, sorry, um, Lord of the Rings. You right. know, the music's just very epic. It just draws you in. Right. You feel everything. When I think of Lord of the Rings and like that era, I also think of Harry Potter. And Harry Potter oh. is like the, my go-to example of yeah. something where it's like, I wish that was a TV series, which further emphasizes that this is probably the smarter way to go. Because fantasy is so big, there's so much world building. And there's people who aren't even familiar with the Dark Crystal. like. Think of all the kids who have never heard of this. Oh, like me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, exactly. Think of all the world building that they can do because it's a series, because yeah. it's episodic. It gives you more time to, to let each thing grow, and uh, I'm super into that. I'm wondering if this is like aimed more at kids, or if it's aimed more at grown-ups, because grown-ups are the ones that are familiar with this franchise, or this, this, I, this IP. It's tricky. Like Stranger Things, for instance. It's definitely aimed more at grown-ups. Right. Right? I mean, it's, it's intense. Obviously, you know, kids are kind of watching that too, but it's aimed more at grown-ups because it's about all the nostalgia that we right. grew up with. And so I'm wondering if this is aimed more at grown-ups, even though it has the sense of something that is for children, uh -huh. for kids, yeah. you know? I'm wondering if the like the running time, is it going to be 30 minutes or is it going to be an hour? Is it going to be hour-long uh. episodic? Because that's a big difference between the two. Well, maybe they're trying to gear it towards both. You know, they're bringing back the nostalgia from the older generations, but trying to get the younger generations interested in the same same storyline. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and what's great about this is so many shows have been coming out that have been big production, but geared towards grown-ups. Like, look at everything happening with uh, DC right now. All oh, the shows, and and, and, yeah. and I'm not I'm not crapping on it at all. Like I appreciate everything they're they're putting out, but it's all aimed at grown-ups. They're super violent, super intense, super you know mature themed, I should say. And this seems like it's meant for the whole family. And it's great that Netflix is diving into this. I mean, obviously they have their their children's section on Netflix. If right. You, if you've ever checked that out, but always. Yeah. <laughs> I love Pixar, <laughs> Disney cartoons. <laughs> right. And so I'm glad Netflix is investing in something that is something meant for the whole family that we can all kind of enjoy together. And bringing back the nostalgia at the same time, like this is a very smart investment. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Be sure to check out Jackie Zender. That sounds like a name right out of Dark Crystal too. Uh, check her out on the social media. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our other reactions, reviews, short films, vlogs, interviews. I'm Jabby Koi, this is? I'm Jackie. Peace out.